What is up fellow nerds and welcome back to the Dapper Snapper Gaming Channel. Now today we are going to be bringing you the second of our monthly series and that is the state of the meta address. So um, very recently, um, today actually at noon, we got the usage stats of, uh, of the month of January. So we are going to go ahead and analyze those, uh, analyze those really quick. And by really quick, I mean this video is probably going to be kind of long, but that's okay. But so yeah, today is Saturday. This video is going up on Sunday. But um, yeah, today at noon, we got to see all of the changes to all of the tiers. And there are quite a few significant changes that I wanted to go over with you guys. Um, and we're going to go ahead and look at the current tiers. And we'll also look at the new NU tier as well. So a lot to cover today but um i think it's gonna be uh i think it's gonna be really cool so first of all let's start with these major changes um right here so chronot gengar and obstagoon move up to ou uh, i'm pretty sure we all saw this coming I'm, I'm pretty sure um when uh when this ban happened i'm pretty sure in a video um i said yeah i can see them all just moving up uh as soon as the next tier shift happens and they did. Um, they're all just really, really great. Um, I love to see Crawdon in OU. Um, Crawdon is such a good mon, and it hasn't really been all that great in the past. Um, but adaptability plus knockoff and aqua jet and uh, liquidation slash waterfall. Um, it gets swords dance. It gets dragon dance. Um, it, it just does a lot of things, and it does a lot of things really, really well offensively. It's a great wall breaker. And Water Dark is a really, really great typing, honestly. So, yeah, I'm really happy to see it move up. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. Gengar. Gengar's been seeing a ton of play in OU. Um, it also saw a ton of play in UU, which is why it got banned to BL. But obviously these three got banned from BL, leaving poor little Halucha by himself in that tier now. But, uh, yeah, Gengar, especially with a scarf or with specs, um, it hits really hard. It's super, super fast. Um, a Scarf one ends up being faster than Dragapult and Oko's it. Um, a Specs one Oko's, or at least two hit KO's most things in the meta, even if they're specially defensive. Uh, yeah, it's a great special wall breaker um, and just awesome sweeper. It also gets Nasty Plot. Um, it, it can do a lot of things really, really well. It's just an awesome mon. Um, Obstagoon. I love seeing Obstagoon move up to, uh, to OU. It's a great counter to... Um, What's it called? Dragapult. Yeah, it's a great counter to Dragapult having the normal typing. So those obviously normally being choiced, you can come in on that shadow ball and uh, and you take no damage. And you fire back, you actually have access to knockoff on this set. Um, the only thing I wish this thing got was Sucker Punch. If this thing got Sucker Punch, it would be an absolute monster. But it is still very, very good with the combination of facade, knockoff, and close combat. It hits incredibly hard, especially with Guts. It also gets access to Bulk Up. Um, it has access to um, Obstruct, which is a really, really cool move in certain situations. Um, it, it's got a lot of options. All three abilities are great. It's a, its stats are pretty good. Um, great mon. Really, really great mon. I, I'm really happy to see that in OU. Um, Cloyster moving up to OU. Now, that is something that we have not seen in a long time. I don't remember the last time... Cloyster was actually in OU. Um, I really don't. It's been a really long time. But I, I do understand why. Um, you can run a Focus Sash set and run uh, Shell Smash. Yeah, this thing is great with Shell Smash. Um, and you run Icicle Spear and Rock Blast and um, Ice Shard. And so, yeah, you're going to be chunking a ton of things in the metagame with, uh, with those three moves. Um, yeah, Ice School Spear hits incredibly hard with Skill Link. Um, I've also seen a lot of them running the King's Rock, which gives you like a 40% chance to flinch the opponent, which is insane after hitting five times. Um, yeah, it's absolutely busted. Uh, it's So it's a really, really great mod. I, I really love Cloyster. Um, I think it's really awesome to see it in OU, and I think it'll, I think it'll do some work. Um, I do think it still struggles against a few things, but um, namely things like Toxapex that are still in the tier um, that hard walls it. Um, you know there are a lot of rain teams in the 
in the meta and usually cloister doesn't carry um, its water type move so it doesn't get boosted by that um, but I do think this mod is is still really really good and I, I can see it staying I could see it staying in OU but um, we'll just have to see come next come next month it's it's one of those that I feel like rides the border between UU and OU so I'm not really sure where it's gonna end up but uh, I think it can stay I think it has potential Rota Mo going from UU to OU this is the first time ever I think that we've had three Rotoms in OU which is absolutely awesome to see. I, I love seeing Rotoms up there, and I love that Rotom Wash is no longer the best Rotom. I think that that's absolutely amazing, seeing uh, seeing Rotom Heats. But um, Rotom Mo is really awesome in OU, especially against things like Seismitoad. Seismitoad is a huge threat, um, and having something with Leaf Storm like this, um, it still gets access to Nasty Plot. It gets access to all kinds of really, really awesome stuff. It gets Volt Switch. Now, one thing that I have seen really um, interestingly on, on Rotoms is a Ring Target Trick set. Um, Ring Target Trick is actually really, really cool, and it's four Seismitoads. Um, and so that way you can hit them with your electric moves, and that's more for, like, Rotom Heat. But... Still, I mean, I, th I think that cool techs like that are what's going to keep these uh, keep these Rotom forms around. And I think it's awesome to see three Rotoms in OU, to see Rotom Mo doing really well like this. Um, I do think that Rotom Frost could see some usage um, now that Heavy Duty Boots are around. But um, I think it's just a little too underwhelming with its typing. But I don't know. I, I think it could have I think it could have potential, but we'll just have to see. Um, now these next two I think are huge. Corsola and Dracozolt dropping to UU. This seems kind of crazy to me. Um, less Corsola than Dracozolt, but I'll talk about both of those. So Corsola, um, obviously with Eviolite, this thing is one of the bulkiest things around. But I think its biggest issue is that it can't break anything that has recovery of its own. Um, so it struggles against things like Milotic. It struggles against Evolutions. Um, it, it struggles against basically anything with Roost or Recover, um, namely Corviknight too. Corviknight is super, super common, and it it doesn't have a great way of dealing with it. Um, so yeah, it, it does struggle, but anything that doesn't have recovery, it does really, really well. So you know, I I do see why it dropped. Um, it was really, really great while we had Dynamax, and I think that that's where all of these big shifts are coming from, is the loss of Dynamax. This is, we're still just feeling uh, feeling the ripple effect of that. But Corsola was really there to help stall out your opponent's Dynamax, but now that that's not something that you really have to worry about, I, I think that's why it is now dropping, because it no longer has has that purpose to serve. Dracozolt dropping. Dragozolt, I think, is also dropping because of this, uh, because of the loss of Dynamax, and I think it just took a little while for it to uh, to to reach that mon. Um, the biggest reason is Hustle, and so Hustle just makes you miss a lot of your moves. And so, yes, Boltbeak hits like an absolute truck, but um, you know, if you're missing your moves constantly, then it really doesn't matter how strong it is, to be honest. Um, yeah, so there's that. There's also Doug Trio. And as long as Doug Trio has Arena Trap, and it's as common as it is, Dracozolt really can't shine all that much. Now, I do, I do eventually see Arena Trap getting banned, um, and once it does, we may see Dracozolt come back up. But as long as Doug Trio is running around, uh, I don't see Dracozolt staying in OU. Um, but I also don't see Dracozolt staying in UU. I, I see it going BL pretty quickly, just because it does hit so hard. Um, but I, I could see some choice banded sets running around through o, through UU, um, possibly some scarf sets. We'll just see. Um, I personally like the blender policy set, but you never know. That's uh, that's just me. But I, I do see why it's dropping to UU. Just there are a lot of things that can counter it right now. But I do think once um, Doug Trio is uh, is nerfed and gets rid of its arena trap, um, I could see this thing coming back. Um, Slowpoke Galar, we don't care about that. Rose Raid moving to UU and Vaporeon moving to UU. So, I think these are interesting too. Um, I don't know why they were considered new. That I don't know. That doesn't make sense. But Rose Raid is a great dual spiker. It gets both spikes and toxic spikes. 
Um, grass typing is really, really good. It can work both both as an offensive mon or as a defensive mon. Typically, um, I like it as an offensive spiker, and it does really, really well in that role. It's also a grounded poison type, so it will absorb your opponent's toxic spikes if they want to go for that with like a Toxapex or anything like that. Um, and it gets a lot of really good coverage. Um, but yeah, it can be bulky, it can be offensive, it can do whatever you need it to do. And that's what I really love about it. And it's design, obviously it's awesome. But yeah, I think Roserade is a really cool mod to have in UU. I really, uh, I really like it there. Vaporeon, I, I could have seen Vaporeon. I think it deserves to be in RU rather than UU. Um, but I, and I do think that it eventually will drop again. The biggest reason is that now it's in a tier with uh, Milotic, and you know, obviously they do things a little bit differently, but just having two bulky waters like that. Um, now, obviously, Milotic is a much more selfish pick, and what I mean is that it just helps itself rather than Vaporeon can like wish and it can uh, it can pass those really really big wishes to to the rest of your team, um, especially things like Weezing, which really appreciates that health. But, um, you know, I, I could see this eventually dropping down to RU. It is a good mod, don't get me wrong. Vaporeon is a great mod, but I, I just don't see it staying in UU. I, I just don't think that that's a thing that's going to that's gonna stay. And then Charizard dropping to RU. I can see it. I understand. Um, it's, it's tough because I think Charizard is still good. I think it's very good in this game just because of Heavy Duty Boots. Um... I think it hits hard. I think Solar Power is a great ability for it, especially on Sun Teams with things like Nine Tails and um, Torkoal. Um, but I do think that outside of Sun, it does struggle to break a lot of things. Um, obviously, the water ground types, if there's no Sun, then you don't have access to the Solar Beam. And so uh, you, can't, you can't hit those for any damage. You just get walled. So, yeah, I, I do see why. Um, and especially the loss of hidden power for hidden power grass, you know, that's that really um, that really hurts this uh, that really hurts this mod. But yeah, so that is going to be our major uh, our big major changes like that. So let's go ahead and look at the OU tier. And so big shocker, Dragapult at number one, as has been from the beginning. I really think that Dragapult needs to get suspect tested because this thing is really strong and especially it being at 40 percent usage it's kind of ridiculous corviknight being at number two no shock there um my first two episodes of taking him down were on these two pokemon so uh, obviously they're a big threat in the uh in the metagame corviknight obviously being able to run things like iron press uh, iron defense and body press um it can run sub bulk up it i mean this thing can do anything you want it to do it, it's just a great mod Dragapult is stupid fast, hits stupid hard, um, yeah, and without pursuit in the game, it's just ghosts are running around everywhere, and it's just absolutely stupid strong. Um, Clefable at number three now, which is really, really awesome. I, I think Clefable is doing really, really well right now. It, typically, you're going to see the offensive um, life orb set with the, uh, the magic guard so that it doesn't take damage from its life orb. But I do think that this is a really, really cool mon to see at number three. Um, it, it does really well. The fairy typing is doing really well right now. And especially as an offensive mon, um, I think it really deserves to be here. Seismitoad sticks at number four. Excadrill at number five. Um, and Hydragon at number six. And actually, we will take a look at... Uh, let's see. I believe down here... Yeah, here we go. So this is a little bit better of a way to look at it. So we've got Seismitoad at four. Excadrill drops a little bit but stays at number five. No shocker there. I, I think that Excadrill is absolutely busted, and I think that, uh, you know, I was calling it before the game even launched that Excadrill would be really, really good. Um, and it is. Rapid Spin boosting your uh, speed by one stage, his attack already being really good. Um, he's faster than Rotom by two points. Um, yeah, with Mole Breaker then being able to knock out any Rotom that's not scarfed, or if he's scarfed himself, then he just knocks him out anyway. Uh, yeah, he, he does really well against Clefable or other fairies like that, um, like Hatterene and Grimmsnarl, um, Sylveon, things like that. He does really well against them. Um, you can run Rock-type moves for things like uh, Mandibuzz or Gyarados. 
Um, yeah, it's it's got a lot of options. It does really well. Hydragon up at number six now. I think that's awesome to see Hydragon finally getting the appreciation that it deserves. Um, you've got things like subplot. You've got just nasty plot three attacks. Um, you've got a scarf. Um, I think Hydragon is one of the best scarfers right now, honestly. It's really, really great because it gets so much good coverage. Um, Ferrothorn, no shocker at being in OU. Um, Aegislash, same thing. You know, Aegislash normally gets banned from OU, but I don't think there's any reason to ban it right now at least not before you ban Dragapult um, I think it's still very good don't get me wrong I think it's great but I think Dragapult's way better so you know we'll, we'll just have to see Cinderace at number nine very flexible mon it can run like choice band it can run court change um, especially with heavy duty boots this mon does really really well um, Rotom Heat at number 10 Again, a lot of people are running this trick ring target tech. If you haven't seen that, it's a really, really cool. So what a ring target does is it makes your opponent take damage from things that normally wouldn't affect it. So basically, you can then hit a seismitoad with an electric type move, even though it's a ground type. So yeah, it, it allows you to then switch that onto that. You can then volt switch on it for the rest of the game. You can hit it with that electric type move for super effective damage. Um, yeah, it's it's a cool tech. It's a really interesting tech, but obviously it's super situational. But, you know, Seismitoad being on 30% of the teams, it's not that situational, honestly. So uh, it's a really cool tech. I think it's really neat. So if you're running a Rotom Heat, you know, look look into that. Um, Como at number 11, obviously at having um, Clangorous Soul, it can set up rocks. Um, it can body press. It, it, it can do a lot of different things. Talk specs. Yeah, that's talk specs. It eats hits for days. It recovers. It scalds. It toxics. It does a lot. Dracovish. I uh, released a video. Uh, it went up yesterday by uh, by when this video is going up um, on how to take it down. And as you can see, there's really not all that many mods that can take it down. It's a stupid strong mod. Um, and obviously, the difference between it and Dracozolt is that accuracy really um and water is just a really good offensive typing right now and it's not walled by a lot um there's very few mods that can really wall this mod so um yeah it, it just it does a lot of work uh mandibuzz mandibuzz is a great wall i've used it on the channel several times um can Kelder, it can run av it can run life orb sheer force um uh it can run guts it, it can do whatever it wants doug trio basically the thing that killed draco zolt to be honest um, Sylveon, it just moved up last month and now it's at number 17. So that's really cool to see. It's really, it's a really good fairy. It can do, um, offensive things with hyper voice and pixelate. It gets wish. Um, a lot of times people are going to run wish protect. That's what I run on mine most of the time. Um, we've got Bisharp, really great. Hatterene, no surprise. Um, I'm really glad to see, um, Toxtricity staying in OU. That's really good to see. Um, Mimikyu, obviously, OU, uh, that makes sense. Um, but yeah, the big ones, I think, are Crawdont and um, Rotom Moe. Those are really, really big. Gyarados almost getting dropped out of OU, which would be kind of nutty. But uh, honestly, with um, with Dynamax no longer being a thing, I'm surprised it's still in OU, to be honest. I mean, it's very strong, don't get me wrong. But it very much relied on, um, on Dynamax, and so did Togekiss. Um, they were some of the best Dynamax mons out there, but now that it's gone, they're nowhere near as good as they used to be. But I think Togekiss is a little more um, is a little more uh, flexible in what it can do. You know, it gets Roost, it gets access to a lot of offensive stuff. It can be bulky. Um, it, it does a lot of different things, and it does a lot of things really well. So UU, let's look at some UU stuff here. Galarian Weezing being number one, no shock there at all. Galarian Weezing is a great mon. It can run offensive, it can run defensive, um, and we have not covered this just yet on our competitive decks, but he will be very soon. Um, actually, he may go up in the next couple of days, actually, because he is uh, a very, very strong mon. But yeah, so you can run defensive um, with Strange Steam. You can run, um, uh, what is it? Uh, Sludge Bomb. It gets... Uh, Fire Blast, it gets all kinds of great coverage, so you can run it as a defensive mon, you can run it as an offensive mon, it gets Defog, um, Specs is really good, uh, yeah, it's just an absolutely amazing Pokemon, and I can see exactly why it is number one. 
Um, Mammoth Swine and Noivern as well being great wall breakers in the UU tier. Um, they they just are really, really good mons for um, for taking out a lot of the big common threats. Um, things like Braviary, things like um, D uh, Diggersby are uh, taken out by Mammoth Swine. Um, Mammoth Swine also can set up rocks. Um, Noivern with specs is super, super scary. Uh, it, it just hits really, really, really hard, um, and it's super fast. It's a great mod. Deblade, the thing never dies, but it doesn't get reliable recovery, and that's why it's not in OU. But with Eviolite, this thing takes hits for days, and um, Sword Stance is not something to be slept on. It, it does a lot of damage. Milotic is, yeah, that thing lives forever. Um, Gengar, we don't worry about anymore because it got banned. Um, Chandelure is a really, really cool mod. It can run Specs. It could run Life Orb. Um, it can run Scarf. I like Scarf Chandelure a lot. I think it's a really great mod. And of course, the ghost typing being absolutely busted in this game because of no pursuit. Um, yeah, he just kind of runs through. And Fire is also a really good typing in uh, in this game. Um, Rotom Mo, obviously, uh, it got banned, so uh, we don't worry about him anymore. Haxorus, I love Haxorus. Um, if you saw my Wi-Fi battle from a couple days ago, Haxorus kind of went in and destroyed the guy's team. Um, it was absolutely great. Um, I love seeing all the different things. It gets Dragon Dance now, so you can run that. Um, it still gets Sword Stance. Um, it still gets all kinds of coverage. It gets Close Combat now, which is absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, it's, it's a great, great mod right now. Um, I also like Choice Banded now that it gets First Impression as well just to give it some priority to help pick off things. Yeah, it's a really, really good mod. Um, Hippowdon, no surprise. It's super bulky, sets up sand. Um, yeah, not much to say there. Obstacle got banned. Umbreon, stupid bulky. It's got Wish. Um, it's got Moonlight. It's got um, Foul Play. It does a lot of work. Um, really, really good wall. Um, we've got Rhyperior. Now, Rhyperior typically sits a little bit lower in usage, but I do like seeing it here. Um, and again, anything that is a good physical wall is going to do well in this in this metagame just because the metagame is so physically oriented. And it does just that with Solid Rock. So I'm really happy to see it, um, see it doing really, really well despite it being so slow. Um, but it does appreciate, you know, if under Trick Room, this thing can can do really well, and you, there is a Gardevoir right there. Um, we've got Surfetched at number 14. Surfetched hits so hard. It's actually incredible how hard this mod hits, especially with uh, with Choice Band. First Impression is like a two-hit KO on a lot of things, which just, just is absolutely mind-blowing that a one-time use move like that that's supposed to be just, you know, a strong move once, it does that much damage. It's crazy. Araquanid, it now gets webs. Um, Water Bubble is an absolutely dumb ability of how good it is. You can't get burned and it boosts your water type moves. Yeah, you two hit KO most things that aren't immune to your water type moves. So I get that. Crawdon's banned. Drapion's really cool. It's uh, It can run both a uh, like a defensive spike set. Um, it can also run an offensive set. It gets knockoff, which a lot of things don't get now. Um, Duraludon, really, really cool mon, very versatile, um, usually going to be um, specially offensive, but it can also run things like Assault Vest, um, Specs is also really good on it, um, yeah, we'll be covering that in the competitive decks also very soon. Lucario has always been a great mon, um, but now it, I think it's a little better now, given, given what it can do, you know, Nasty Plot and Sword Stance, um, Mock Punch and Vacuum Wave, Bullet Punch, uh, close combat. It, it gets a lot of different coverage. Meteor Mash. Yeah, it's really, really good. The The only reason that it doesn't do a lot better is because there are so many ghosts. Honestly, there are just so many ghosts in the tier that that is the only reason why he isn't any higher to me. And speaking of ghost, Poltegeist sitting here in UU. Um, Poltegeist is one of those things that you never would have thought that it would be all that great, but it's actually really strong with a shell smash up it kills a lot of stuff especially because it gets stored power um shadow ball hits incredibly hard again ghost spam is a thing um and it also gets grass type coverage to take out um those pesky gastrodons it helps you to hit things like vaporeon now um yeah things like clay all it helps you to hit uh it, it's a great mod it really is um let's see yeah galissapod is really strong it's always been strong 
But yeah, um, Barascuda is another one that is um, significant sitting here. Um, obviously, they uh, knocked it down to UU, and it's not doing all that well, uh, which I, I really feel like Barascuda is a good mon. But um, unfortunately, it's just not seeing a whole lot of usage. And Cramorant, hanging on by a thread here at number 48. I love Cramorant, the good old dirt bird. And I think it has to do with that set that I showed off, the meme set. Um, you know, it it having the ability to paralyze things um, as it dies is kind of significant. It's, it's actually very significant. Um, and so, you know, I, I think that this mon really serves a purpose that no other mon can. And that's what's keeping it in a tier as high as UU. And I really think that that's awesome to see. Uh, and Morpeko, actually. Morpeko is another really cool mon to see. Um, obviously, that was also featured in that Wi-Fi battle I mentioned about Haxorus a couple of days ago. And they both just kind of went in on my opponent's team. But yeah, they are both really, really great mons. Uh, Morpeko obviously can just get a bunch of speed stacked up and just kind of wreck because it's it's pretty fast already and aura wheel is based like 110 or something yeah it's really really strong so yeah i can see why more pecos up here i can see why cramorant's up here and i think it's absolutely amazing to see so now let's look at our ru tier so this is the first time we're having usage stats for ru and i think it's interesting seeing uh seeing these so we've got gigalith at number one it makes sense. Gigalith is super bulky. It also gets sturdy. It gets rocks. It sets up sand. It does. It does a lot of cool things that um, that really nothing else can, to be honest. Um, and so, if you want to run sand on a team, you gotta have him. And it really helps things such as Mudsdale. Um, things, uh, yeah. It helps Gastrodon. It helps them on that specially bulky side. Um, really nice mod. Um, Sigalith. It can do a lot of different things. Obviously, with Magic Guard. Um, you can psycho shift the burn or the poison over to your opponent, but you take no damage to rocks You take no damage to anything except for direct damage to you um, You've got Gudra Yeah, Gudra is a great mon and a great special wall. It gets a lot of great coverage um, You can run AV on it. You can also run things like specs or leftovers it's Super super versatile mon super bulky uh, great great pick Salazzle. I love Salazzle. It's just not quite bulky enough for me, but it's fast and it hits hard um, And grounded poison type which is always a good thing especially with Rose Raid sitting right there Although Rose Raid got banned so uh, we don't have to worry about Rose Raid anymore But you do have to worry about um, things like Garboder and things such as Rune Regis um, That's also those are some things that will set up those toxic spikes in front of you So uh, yeah, th that's still something that has to be worried about um, Scarf Passimian is a very strong threat, as well as Banded, to be honest. Um, yeah, we saw how strong it was in the Rambats episode the other day. Um, Passimian kind of went in and just 6 0 my opponent's team. Um, Rose Raid, we don't care. Vaporeon, we also don't care. Yeah, Rose Raid and Vaporeon, we don't care about either of those. Delmize, I love seeing Delmize used in RU. Um, it, and I think it has a lot to do with the Rapid Spin buff. That's really cool to see. Um, and it just hits hard, and Steelworker is just such a good ability, giving it three stabs. Uh, yeah, it's just a great one, and I absolutely love its design. I absolutely love everything about it. It's great. Steelix. I honestly thought Steelix might be a little higher, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, body press on this mon hits like an absolute truck, um, especially with iron defense as well. This thing has a defense stat through the absolute roof. It's, it's kind of insane. Um, Vile Plume has always been a great wall. Um, Leech Seed and uh, all of that good stuff. Um, Pangoro. Um, I love seeing Pangoro down here. Um, I love seeing Beware here, not in NU. Um, those are both really, really cool offensive mods. And of course, uh, my wife's favorite Pokemon are the ones that are bears. So uh, she she's happy to see those in that tier as well. Um, yeah, but they just do really, really well in the tier, just being really strong. They don't have to be super fast, um, but they, they do really well. They're, they're great breakers. Um, Galvantula being a awesome sticky webber for this low tier. Um, we've got Zatu as a magic bouncer, which is awesome. Torkoal to set sun. Ninetales is also here to set sun. Rillaboom. I don't see Rillaboom staying down here. I think it's going to end up moving up. Um, especially once it gets its hidden ability. Once this thing gets access to Grassy Terrain, um, or Grassy Surge, rather, 
yeah, this thing will move up for sure. I think I think this will end up in UU. Um, what else notable? Flapple being here is really awesome. Turtonator I think is really interesting to see in this tier. Um, I would have expected it lower. Regular Rotom is interesting as well. Um, but of course, being a ghost, um, I can see it. Ghost and Steel Silvalli is really great to see here. Um, ghost, obviously, Ghost Spam. Ghosts are just really good in this uh, in this current meta. So I can definitely see why a uh, boosted multi-attack coming off of this thing, yeah, it makes sense. Now steel type is uh, is also a really, really cool one. It helps against things like alchemy um, and it helps against like uh, your hail teams that are kind of common down here. Um, yeah, it does it does some work. I, I think that steel type so valley is really cool to see. Um, Quagsire being down here is kind of a problem. Quagsire and Gastrodon being this low. Um, I think that's why we have things like Delmize down here, but I think once Rillaboom gets gets banned, which I do see it happening, I think they're going to be great. The only thing you have to watch out for is going to be the Torkoal Shift Tree, which I see a lot of um, definitely going to be coming very, very soon. Um, Rune Regis is going to be there to set up Trick Room, to set up Hazards, um, so you'll have to watch out for things like uh, Trick Room and then with like Turtonator. Um, you also have things like Tailwind with Whimsicott, which is also a really, really cool tech. Um, I think that it's interesting seeing, um, what is that thing called? Eldegoss. Yeah, Eldegoss, I think, is kind of underwhelming. Um, so I'm kind of surprised to see it here and not in NU. But it makes sense. I, I understand. Um, but yeah, I think this is, uh, I think this is a really cool, um, I think this is a really cool breakdown. So let's go ahead and jump over to showdown here. Um, and we can look at the current NU tier. Um, so Obama Snow is really awesome because it gets access to Veil. And I, I think the biggest reason why I think it's going to be a good Veiler is because it actually like is a decent mon and has decent stats and can still do things after it sets up the Veil. Um, I think the biggest problem with things like Ninetales is that it just kind of dies after it sets up Veil. But this can actually do things, obviously barring a fire type. Appleton is awesome to see. It's a super bulky mon. Um, and I love the grass dragon typing, especially with thick fat. Really great mon. Um, Arctivision Arctazolt, I think you're going to see quite a bit of that paired with, um, paired with something like the... Um, do we have any trick room setters down here? I don't know if we do. Um, I think I think Kafagrigus gets it. Um, Gothitel probably does. I don't remember right off everything that gets it. Um, I don't know if Meowstic does or not. Um, Oranguru definitely does. Um, so yeah, um, Rapidash, Galarian Rapidash actually gets uh, gets trick room, even though it doesn't benefit from it itself. But yeah, so I think Trick Room might end up being a really cool option down here, especially with uh, with things like Arctivish, Arctazolt, Cursula. Cursula is insane down here. Base 145 special attack. Are you kidding me? This thing is incredibly strong. Um, we already covered it in, uh, in competitive decks, but yeah, this thing is crazy strong. Um, Basculin, okay, I understand. Um, you know, it gets adaptability, but it still doesn't get Mold Breaker, and I think that's something that's kind of holding it back. It's hard, because it does get three really good abilities in Reckless, Rockhead, and Adaptability, um, but I think Mold Breaker is kind of a good ability to have now. Um, it's just it's just tough at not getting it, but it will once uh, once Bank, um, once Home drops, actually. Um, Bear Tick. Bear Tick's interesting to see down here. Um, Especially with Slush Rush, still having Slush Rush and Obama Snow being around. I could see that being uh, that being somewhat common. Um, we've got Behem, which is a really great Trick Room Mon, base 125 special attack. Um, it's a really great Mon, it's just really slow. Bellossom, I don't think Bellossom's all that great, to be honest. Um, only base 90 special attack and base 50 speed, so even after a Quiver Dance, it still doesn't outspeed a lot. So it's kind of unfortunate. Butterfree is really, really good. I think that it's great down here. It gets Sleep Powder. Um, it gets things like Pollen Puff, which is a great new move for it to have. Um, yeah, a great mod. Um, Cherim. Cherim is going to struggle down here because both of your big Sunsetters are up here now with Torkoal and Ninetales. So I don't see Cherim 
doing very much um, because you'd have to set up your son um, manually. Um, Kafa Grigas, I think a nasty plot set is really, really awesome. Um, I think that it also can set up Trick Room, which is great. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be a nice mod down here. Crustle, um, you've got Sturdy Shell Smash, which is never a bad thing. Uh, I, I think this thing might be a threat down here. We'll just have to see. Um, Cursula, under Trick Room, Cursula is going to underspeed almost everything and absolutely obliterate them with the base 145. So yeah, if you can get a Trick Room off and then switch this in with specs, yeah, it's going to be absolutely insane. Um, we've got Deli Bird, which Deli Bird is Deli Bird, whatever. Um, Drampa's cool to see, especially with Berserk. Um, again, super slow. Uh, yeah, a lot of these mons are really, really slow. Um, but again, that's why they're down here. Um, but yeah, he hits pretty hard, especially with Specs. I really like Specs Drampa. Um, I think it's a really great mon. And especially getting the Berserk boost after you get below half, it's, it's really cool. I have seen some people run Barry on it. Um, I ran Barry on it a little bit in Sun and Moon. And so basically what it does is you get your Berserk boost, um, and then you heal back up, and then you get your Berserk boost again if they don't do enough damage. But obviously it's going to be a little bit harder since the berries only do 33% uh, rather than 50. So it's a little less viable in this uh, in this metagame. Dreadnaw. Um, Dreadnaw's not going to do all that well because it doesn't have rant support. So yeah, you know, Sh Strongjaw will be running around. And base 74 is kind of fast in this metagame, but not really. There's a lot of base 75s, as you can see. Um, things like Phalanx are just going to come in and kill it. So, yeah, it's it's not really that great. Double will also kill it with a body press. Um, I, I see I see Double as being a really interesting one. I, I, like, I like it. It's super bulky. Gets body press. Um, yeah, Cotton Guard body press is a great set on this. Um, and it can do a couple other things, but that's typically what you're gonna want to run with fluffy and um, And all that yeah, if you kill the special attackers on the opponent's team This thing never dies um, Dusk Noir is pretty cool. Um, I've never really been that huge of a fan of Dusk Noir I just think it's rather underwhelming ice Q and phalanx. I think are really weird being this low um, especially with Ice Q having Belly Drum and Phalanx having an Omni Boosting move in No Retreat and Defiant. Yeah, it's kind of crazy seeing him this low. But, I mean, I guess I understand, but I kind of see these two rising eventually. But maybe not. We'll see. I, I just I just think it's this is a little low for them. I think they deserve uh, RU at least. Um, Flareon. Flareon is something that you should never sleep on because of flash fire and guts. Um, it's just a little slow at 65. 65 is just really slow. But I think under webs, this mon does really well in higher tiers. So, uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Um, I, I really like guts Flareon with, um, with Toxic Orb. I think it just does a really good job. Garboder is a dual spiker. Um, it also gets weak armor. It gets aftermath. Um, it, it does a lot of really cool things. It's a really good bulky um, hazard setter, and that's basically all that it does. Um, and so that's kind of why it that's kind of why it doesn't do all that well. It's also weak to ground, which is the best offensive typing, obviously. So you know it, it does struggle against that. But um, Glaceon getting Wish is really cool. Base one ten defense is not bad at all. Base one thirty special attack again. It hits pretty hard. I think it's better in this game than it has been in the past. But it's still a little underwhelming for me. Again, that base 65 speed of the evolutions is, uh, of most of the evolutions anyway, is uh, just a little too slow, unfortunately. Glalie. Um, you, can, you know, you can't use Moody. So without Moody, this thing's basically useless. It doesn't get a whole lot. It did get Icicle Crash in this gen, but it's... Uh, it's not enough. It's it's not enough. I, I now I kind of see it being somewhat useful, maybe you know on on hail teams, but um, you know eighty all around isn't all that great. So I I don't see it. Uh, I don't see it doing all that well. Um, Golurk being base fifty five speed is really slow. It does have a base one twenty four attack, which is great, but it also doesn't get no guard, and it's so used to running no guard with um, dynamic punch. But obviously we can't do that now, so you have to rely on Iron Fist and moves that will actually hit. So yeah, that's a thing. 
Um, Gothitelle, um, I think Shadow Tag is banned, so that's why Gothitelle is so low. When Shadow Tag is not banned, this thing is stupid good. When Shadow Tag is banned, it just kind of drops. So Competitive is still a good ability, and Frisk is still a good ability, but um, besides that, it's kind of underwhelming. Um, Gorgeist. Gorgeist is just has always been rather underwhelming. Um, you know, Grass Ghost is an okay typing, but it just doesn't get the move pool that it needs in order to support it. You know, it, you can run things like uh, Bulky Leech Seed, which, uh, which you could run on the super, um, but then you're really slow. Um, it gets things like Trick or Treat, which can then uh, make your opponent weak to your ghost moves. It does get priority in Shadow Sneak, which is cool, but yeah, it's, it's just kind of underwhelming, to be honest. Um, you've got Grap Locked down here. Ah, oh, man, I hate seeing Grap Locked this low because I love this mon so much, but I do understand. It's it's just too slow. It's not bulky enough. Um, Octolock is kind of underwhelming. It just takes too long to actually set it up. So, yeah, it's it's just it's just not... It just doesn't work out all that great. Greedent. Greedent's just kind of super, super situational. Base 20 speed is insanely slow, um, but under Trick Room... You never know. Base 95 with a sort with a uh, belly drum. You never know. But again, you got to get that belly drum up, and uh, it just takes a lot of setup for this thing to work. And um, unfortunately, usually he dies before the setup can actually be complete. So yeah, that's that's the unfortunate thing about Greedent. Um, Heatmore, Heatmore is just an underwhelming mon in general. Um, I've never really liked Heatmore honestly from day one. It's just kind of weak. Um, we've got. Hitmonchan and Hitmontop. Hitmonchan, I understand. Hitmontop, I like Hitmontop being a little higher just because it does have Intimidate. Intimidate's a great ability in this meta right now, just with there being so many physical attackers. So, you know, I do hate to see that it's down here in NU, but again, I understand. Its stats are a little underwhelming at base 95 attack, 70 speed. You know, it's, it, it's a little bulky, but, you know, it's still kind of kind of underwhelming um jolteon why is jolteon down here jolteon is gonna like run through this tier i feel like um unless you've got a lantern to check it with volt absorb because it doesn't get water absorb um unless you've got a jolteon a uh something down here to check it then uh this thing's gonna kind of go in i feel like so jolteon's gonna be a big threat in this tier so make sure you're prepared for that just just saying it's gonna be a huge threat um kingler sheer force life orb is the thing with base 130 attack and base 75 speed um i think 75 is a decent speed tier in nu so i could see kingler being a nice uh a nice little sweeper here so you know watch out for that but a counter to that is cling clang um cling clang getting off obviously getting um clear body it's immune to uh it's immune to stat drops which is really cool especially for things that might want to drop it such as hit on top um yeah it's it's a really cool mon it gets shift gear it gets uh gear grind um obviously it gets electric type moves um things like that you've got lantern which is a great wall i love this mon having a huge base hp stat um lapras is is cool to see down here um, you, it obviously gets things like Dragon Dance, which can help it sweep. Um, now, it will get access to um, Primarina's signature move once uh, Primarina is released. So we'll see if that has anything to do. Um, you know, I did show off in my, um, my competitive items guide. You know, obviously that'll be able to use Throat Spray then after that. So you never know. Um, you know, I don't know the calc on base 60 speed, but... I don't wonder if somebody might want to run um, like Dragon Dance for the speed um, and then Throat Spray with the um, the Sparkling Aria or whatever that's called. Um, you know, maybe. You never know. I don't know. Um, but yeah, base 85 is kind of underwhelming on offenses. Um, Leafeon is kind of interesting to see down here just because it does also counter Lapras and Lantern. It's really fast for the tier at base 95. Um, so I could see it doing some work. Um, Lipard always does. It, it does work when it has Prankster, but it currently doesn't have Prankster. So once Lipard gets access to Prankster, once Home drops, 
it will rise significantly. I will go ahead and call that right now. But until it can do that, yeah, it's uh, it's kind of out of luck. Um, we've got Ludicolo, which is always a great uh, a great rain sweeper, but obviously there's no uh, there's no rain down here. Um, we've got Lunatone, which is interesting to see. He's always been underwhelming, but you know whatever. Uh, Malamar. Uh, Malamar is weird to see down here for sure, just with Contrary and uh, Superpower, especially given how physical the um, physical the entire meta is. Um, so I could see Malamar doing some work, especially at base 73 speed. Again, that's faster than most things in this tier. So I could see it doing well. Um, Manetric is really fast. I could see it being a decent wall breaker, especially with specs. Um, at 105 speed is going to outspeed most things in the tier. So I could see Specs Manetric running around everywhere, um, especially as a check to Jolteon, um, especially with uh, Lightning Rod. You bring this in on a Lightning Rod and um, just kind of go to town. So yeah, but they'll try to check each other basically because of Voltazorb and uh, Lightning Rod. So just uh, just watch out for that. Um, Mantine, obviously four times a week to Manetric, but... Um, yeah, it's it does get water absorb, which is cool. Um, it gets swift swim, but there's no rain down here, so it's uh, it's it's kind of interesting. But I think if you were able to set up rain, I think this thing could do some decent sweeping. So like a spec set with uh, under rain, maybe I don't know if a Rangaroo gets rain dance or not, but if it does, then that would be really cool. Um, yeah, so Maractus Maractus is a meme. I don't know why it made it into this why it made it into this generation um but again it lost its rain setters to ru or its sun setters to ru so you know it does get both water absorb and it will get storm drain it's not going to make a huge difference honestly because it's just too slow and uh 106 is a decent special attack but yeah he's too slow and he no longer has the weather support so just kind of unfortunate mawile it's super weak without its mega so rip um, Meowstic. Meowstic without Prankster. Useless. Meowstic without Competitive. Even more useless. Um, yeah, Meowstic female is, has always been worse than Meowstic male. But, yeah, without Prankster, it's super garbage. But once it gets its Prankster back, I think it'll rise a little bit. Um, Mr. Mime. Mr. Mime is cool to see down here. Um, now, obviously, this one is, you know, the stats are what you see. They, it is not one that evolves. So, um, but filter is a really cool ability for it to have on it. So, um, I think it'll be an interesting wall. Um, you've got Masharna, which is a cool mon. It doesn't need telepathy, obviously, but you know, forewarn and synchronize are both pretty bad abilities, but it's kind of bulky and it hits kind of hard with 107. So that's pretty cool. Ninjask, stupid strong, and it also gets speed boost. So it's just super fast, but it just doesn't quite hit hard enough and it's ridiculously frail it's four times weak to rocks There's so many things working against it um knocked owl it really appreciates having tinted lens um so that's unfortunate for him um yeah tinted lens is really what helps this thing to be at least okay because if i'm not mistaken tinted lens is the one that makes not very effective hit normally effective so you know that's that's sad um octillery no moody so uh you know, and Sniper is really not all that great. You've got a Rangaroo, which is basically only good in doubles. Um, but you never know. It can be a good Trick Room setter. You never know. I, I think he's a good Trick Room setter. Um, so you never know. Um, Orbeetle. Orbeetle, I think, is kind of surprising to see down here, given its speed and bulk. Um, it also gets Sticky Web. It gets um, Calm Mind. It gets uh, Iron Defense. And then on top of that, it gets Store Power. It gets body press. It gets a lot of stuff. I think Orbital is better than NU, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. I think Orbital is a little too good for NU. I, I can see that rising. Um, Perserker is interesting to see down here. I think he's just underwhelming. He's slow. He doesn't hit quite hard enough. His typing, you know, pure steel is okay, but it's not great. Um, Persian, yeah, Persian's bad. It's pretty fast, but base 70 attack is really underwhelming um Pintkirchen setting up terrain is really cool um but that's about all it does uh, and there's you know obviously um i could see this 
being uh, being paired with a Jolteon in the future, just to um, just to boost the Jolteon up. Um, and once we get um, uh, a Lolan Raichu, I could see Pincurchin getting some more usage. So we'll just we'll have to see. Um, Pukumuku is Pukumuku. It's super bulky, and then it just kind of sits there, and it has like four moves that it knows. So you know, it's whatever. It does get unaware which allows you to ignore anything that's setting up on you and it does get innards out which is kind of like aftermath um yeah it's it's an okay mod but it's really underwhelming to me anyway um we've got quillfish which gets which gets intimidate um base 85 is kind of fast for this tier um you know so it could be okay um obviously rotom is 86 so that's kind of unfortunate for him so quillfish may not be all that great just because i see rotom being kind of prevalent but you know we'll see raichu really fast in the tier gets lightning rod as well um all of these electric types i think are going to do really well in the tier so i do think that we'll see a lot of santa Conda as well um galarian rapidash you know base 100 attack is okay base 105 speed is pretty good uh, but pastel veil being its best ability really holds it back because it really doesn't do anything you know you can't poison it but you know, like, who cares? If you're getting hit with a Poison-type move, you're bo you're probably going to die. So you're not worried about getting poisoned. So it doesn't matter. Um, Rotom Fan, Rotom Frost is, uh, you know, these are usually where they sit. Um, although Heavy Duty Boots helps both of these out a lot. So, you know, I could see them possibly rising in the future. We'll see. Just their typing is hard because their typing doesn't lend themselves to be all that bulky, especially Ice. Um, but their stats lend them to be bulky, so it's it's kind of tough. They're they're just in a weird spot, and so that doesn't that just doesn't help them at all. Um, Sandaconda is really cool, especially the shed skin shed skin rest set is really awesome on this mod. Um, you know, I showed it off in a previous Wi-Fi battle, and it does really well. Um, Sock without Mole Breaker is just tough. It can't really take on Rotom all that well, but once it gets access to Mole Breaker, it's going to start doing some major damage. Um, we've got Scrafty. Scrafty is another great mon. It can do shed skin things. It also gets Intimidate and Moxie, which are all really great abilities for it. Um, it's a really great offensive mon. Um, it also does really well with Assault Vest. Um, it gets Knockoff, which few things get right now. And so it's really awesome to, uh, to see this mon. I think it'll do well in this tier, to be honest. Um, Seeking, it doesn't get Lightning Rod and there's no, wa and there's no rain, so who cares? Um, Shedinja. Shedinja might do okay. I don't know. Um, Shedinja is weird because either you run heavy duty boots and don't take rocks damage from things like Shuckle, or you run um, Focus Sash and die to the rocks if they're still set up, but you take one hit if something attacks you. So it, there's just such a major trade off, and it's something that there's no way for you to predict before the battle starts. Um, so either you need to have like a great defog slash spinner option, which there aren't many in the tier. Um, so it might be better to run heavy duty boots, but then you don't get to like set up a sword stance. So it's like, eh, you know, so this, this mod does, uh, does suffer a lot from that. Uh, Shinotic. I like Shinotic. I think it's a cool special wall. Um, it gets a lot of cool mons, a lot of cool moves rather. It gets Spore, um, it gets uh, it gets uh, Strength Sap, it gets a lot of really really interesting moves. Um, but its typing is kind of underwhelming. Being four times weak to uh, Poison is kind of bad. So you know, it, but it, it does okay. It's it's nowhere near as good as things like Amoongus or. Um, what is the other bulky grass boy? I'm not thinking of who it is right now. Uh, Rose Raid, it's worse than Rose Raid. It's, it's worse than a lot of these boys like this. Um, we've got Shuckle. You've got Sturdy Shuckle that can set up rocks. It can, shed, it can set up, um, uh, what's it called? Sticky Web. You've also got the Shell Smash Contrary set, which is also a thing. But um, overall, this thing's pretty underwhelming. Um, you've got all these Silvalli forms. Most of them are pretty irrelevant. Um, I think Dark is going to be good, and I think Fighting will be good, but besides that, uh, probably not. Um, we've got Skuntank, which is a good bulky mon. Um, it also gets things like Fire Blast, which is cool. It gets really good coverage, um, and it's a grounded poison type, which is cool. Um, Slurpuff. 
it doesn't get belly drum so it's just kind of garbage so you know it does get unburdened and it gets decent special attacks but like until it gets its belly drum back it's gonna be garbage but once uh once home drops you never know this thing is probably gonna shoot up in usage significantly once it gets its belly drum back um soul rock is uh you know underwhelming just like lunatone stone journer i hate seeing stone journer this low but i do understand uh, but you never know as the as the metagame shifts around you know we're gonna get so so obviously there are three big points that i'm thinking of as far as like the meta shifting so the first one is when home is introduced um and so when home drops the metagame is going to completely change because we're going to get um we're going to get alolan forms reintroduced we're going to get um, several mods are going to be getting old moves that they didn't, that they don't have access to now. Things, a lot of things are going to get knock off again. Um, Slurp up getting um, belly drum again. There, uh, things getting defog again. Things like that. Um, so, you know, the metagame is going to change then, and then obviously in June and then um, fall. So, you know, I think that this first shift will help Slurp up, and I hope Stonejourner gets a chance to shine. You know, base seventy is a good speed. And base 125 attack and base 135 defense with base 100 HP is really good. So, you know, I, I hope this mod does well in the future. I really like this mod. Um, Galarian Stunfisk, I actually hate this mod. I think it's stupid. Um, you know, say what you want in the comments, but I think this mod's dumb. Mimicry's not a great ability. Um, because obviously you have to have something on your, on your team that's the exact same... Uh, type in order to set up the terrain in the first place so it's kind of redundant to have it which obviously mimicry you know makes sense but yeah i just think it's super underwhelming for what it is supposed to do and yeah i don't really care about it um Sudowudo is a nice little uh, stealth rocker with sturdy makes 115 defense is pretty good but um yeah that's about all he does um swoobat it doesn't get simple so it's useless so yeah once it gets simple though i, I definitely see it rising um Thievel has been useless since day one i don't care about it it gets no good moves it's unburdened barely gets to be used its best set is snarl with unburden and um throat spray and even that's pretty bad um throw doesn't get mold breaker so who cares it does get guts which guts helps it out a lot it does hit really hard um, to get a Maru is pretty bulky and it gets sturdy. It also gets spiky shield now, which is really cool um, And it gets zing zap, which is also nice and base 96 speed is really fast in the tier. So You know it might do some work. We'll just see if uh, if this thing can zing zap its way um, Into uh, into a higher tier, but obviously we've already seen three things that are immune to to get a Maru by their um, ability alone so and eh, we'll, we'll see um, Toxicroak, you know, it doesn't get poison touch, but honestly, that's not the thing that's holding it back. It's just itself that's holding it back. Um, it just doesn't get enough coverage, and it just doesn't hit quite hard enough, and it's just not quite fast enough. It's just, like, right there, though. But, you know, we'll see if anything changes, but I, I don't really see much changing for this. Trevenant. Trevenant's one of those mods that I absolutely love its design. It's, it's a great, greatly designed mod, but it's just... A little underwhelming and now it doesn't have sun support for harvest um, and the berries you know the berries getting um, nerfed is uh, just was kind of the nail in the coffin for this guy so it's unfortunate but um, and pheasant sucks it's just really bad it does get brave bird now which is good um, that's a huge buff for it but as you can see it's still not enough because this mons just bad that's all I have to say about it um, Vespiquen is a cool mod but it lost heal order <laughs> why it kept attack order it kept defend order but they got rid of heal order and it doesn't get roost so it's like you know this mod is already like it has base 102 defenses and base 70 hp so like you know it's got a little bit of bulk to it but it's got to be able to heal like otherwise it's completely useless and that's what they did they took away its healing so once home comes this this mod will get better this mod will get a lot better if now, I don't know if Heal Order is one that they just straight killed off. Um, and I don't know if this thing will get access to Roost once Home drops. If it does get access to Roost, then I can see this thing rising. So, 
We'll just have to see, though. Um, Vickavolt. Vickavolt hits stupid hard, but it's just way too slow. Um, I think it's a great mod. It's got great coverage. It gets, uh, obviously, electric and bug in Thunderbolt and Bug Buzz. It also gets grass-type coverage um, and a few other things. It's a really good mod. It's just really, really slow, despite how it looks. It looks like it would be really fast, kind of like um, Scizor, but both of them are, like, super slow. Um, Waylord. Waylord's always underwhelming. It's, you know, it has the base 170 HP, but its defenses are 45, so it doesn't help even support itself. So that's just, you know, he's just underwhelming, unfortunately. He's a cool wall. Um, you know, he obviously can um, stall people out with pressure. Um, and he also gets oblivious, which is nice. But again, it's just too little for it. I, I just don't think it's going to be good. Um, Whizcash, um, its best ability is hydration. You know, in rain, resting, and um, and getting rid of your... your uh, your sleep so once it gets hydration it'll be a little better but you know until then it's not all that great um but it does get dragon dance which is cool um so i could definitely see like a rest set on um on a rain team um obviously manual rain um with uh with rest to heal off the hydration set up dragon dances and then sweep so you know we'll, we'll just see um wishy-washy you know, Wishiwashi is a cool mon. It, it hits really hard and it's really bulky while it's a big boy. But once it gets to 25%, it's basically just a free kill for your opponent. So, you know, it's it's kind of like um, Archeops where it's just kind of like, okay, go ahead and kill me. So, it, yeah, it, it just, it's too, it's too useless, honestly. And especially with all those electric types that are going to be running around in the tier. Um... I don't see this thing doing well. And then Wobbuffet, obviously. Wobbuffet can be the best mon on your team in certain situations, but usually it's the worst. So <laughs> that's why he's down here. And that is it. That is all the mons that uh, that is all the mons that I needed to cover. So let me know down in the comments below what you think about these tier changes and the new NU tier. What you think is going to be uh, what you think is going to be strong. What you think is going to not be all that great. Um, if you think that all of these changes up here were deserved or not, um, yeah, just let me know what you think. And, uh, yeah, that is going to be it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know it's a long one, but, um, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys enjoy, uh, seeing all of these, uh, this new information. So anyway, guys, I will see you all tomorrow and, uh, until then have a great day and, uh, yeah, bye-bye.